It's already recording. Cool. Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. I'm RJ. And this is Episode <laughs> 140. <laughs> I'm tired. And it is the 17th of January. No, June. It is June 17th. Alright. We were up late last night because somebody had a rodeo. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get right on into it because it's been a doozy of a week, has it not? Busy one. Mm hmm. Okay, so in the barn stalls, you're about to see just how busy it is. Um, Alright, so we started out moving the bull to a grassy area. Mm -hmm. How'd that go? Not very good. How come? Because he was pinning the sheep up against the fence and hitting them. And yeah. We were going to put him in the turnout with them. And then what happened when you tried to go get him off again? He tried to run me over. <laughs> it startled RJ. He whacked him in the head with a bucket. <laughs> we went and just put him back. He's, he's calm in his pen and he's fine. And then when he gets turned down on the pasture, he does fine. We just wanted to try and get him some more grass. I feel bad that he... Just constantly pay, huh? So that didn't go as planned, did it? All right, and then we were out there and we were doing a little bit of recording, and we hear a bang bang, and what happened? Oh, storm cut away. Yep, you had just walked in there and done meet the animals with storm, correct? Mm -hmm. And he walked out, and I don't know, she just did something and she's now cut up on her back legs. We know it came from her own shoes. She did it with like um, the edge of her shoes on her back legs. But we can't find anything. Um, the intern and I stood up there for probably 30 minutes inspecting that stall and another stall. I'll tell you why in a minute. And never did have any luck finding anything that she would have cut it on other than her own hooves. So not a good thing. Uh, then, let's see what else we got. Golden Boy, where's Golden Boy? He went to a new home. <laughs> we got him a new home last week. So that is a good thing. It's a new permanent home. Yeah, no more of this going home, coming back to us, all that stuff. And then the gentleman that purchased him, what do you do? Took him to her open. Day later or so. He bought him on Friday and on yep. Sunday he took him to a rodeo. How'd he do? Um, I'd say he went around and went second half. So he was really, really happy. And all he could say, he's a gentleman, he ropes as a hobby, but he, he's just always used whatever horses his kids have. And his daughter's horse has gotten to where she can't take the pounding of both events. So he decided he was going to buy one for himself. And this is the first one he's bought for himself. All right. Mm -hmm. And his son just looked at him and goes, man, that's the best looking horse on the place. And so they really like him. That he's in a good home. We'll see him at rodeos. It is a, a family friend's son-in-law. So, yeah. We'll know all about how he does. That's a good thing, right? Um, Miss Henny Penny there, she catched all of her chickens out, right? She's got ten Yep. So, she is in the barn. Um, our feathered friend with the busted wing, he's doing okay, but the bone just is not going to go up underneath the um, skin. So, it's just going to be that way, isn't it? Yep. But, we're leaving him in the barn. Why? Because his girlfriend has a neck. Yep. And what else is going on in ducky land around here? We have a rogue duck. Rogue duck. She has a nest. And yes. how many mornings did it take us to find said duck? And how long the last day that we actually found her did it take to find her? 30 minutes an hour. We followed her from the barn to the house, back to the barn. Back to the house. Back to the house and then down the driveway and found her hidey hole. So we're now checking her um, just like twice a day to make sure she's okay out there. Um, 
so yeah she has a nest and she's sitting on the nest so <sighs> sorry about the yawns um RJ didn't even give me time to get my tea this morning. Um, but with any luck, maybe we'll have a couple of little ducky ducks around here soon. Right? He, you can tell he doesn't really like ducks. I love ducks. They're so cute. Anyway. All right. Last thing. No. In the last thing. Because we got... Two. Oh, we haven't... I'm going to have to start crossing up the list because it is a bad week and we are... Um, okay, we told you about the ducks. We told you about the chicks. We told you about Golden Boy. We told you about Storm and the Bull. All right, so we're at... Dirt. No. Um, oh. We did have Miss Turkey pass away. Um, Easter. We don't know what happened. We just found her out there. She was fine. Um, we were going about our day. We saw her out and about. When we were doing chores, she got fed, she got her cookies, everything was normal, and then all of a sudden we just look out there and she's passed. So, um, we don't know what happened. She lived a good long life, huh? Mm -hmm. But that was my old girl. I'm kind of missing her, so. Anyway, alright, so fast forward to Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we've been having... All the horses but one go out on the pasture, letting them run at night and be horses. Yep. And uh, when RJ brought up Coop Wednesday, you roped on her Tuesday morning. Mm. Or you used her to gather horses Tuesday morning. Then Wednesday evening, he brought her up. And what was wrong? I'll let you. He doesn't want to say it. Um, she split her vulva. And no, we don't know how. Um, the vet said that the cut went across like this and angled down. So she thinks she rubbed it on maybe a T-post. We have gone through, I don't know how much cleaning out there. When we first moved here, there was piles of stuff everywhere. And now we have everything cleaned up. Even the old well was removed. The only thing out there that she could have cut it on is a T post or, or a fence post or a barb from the barbed wire. And I don't see her itching on the barbed wire because we'd have fence down someplace. Um, she's weighs too much to do that. So um, Wednesday night, our vet is with his girls. And he's not just, when he takes vacation, he's not just at home on vacation. He doesn't do staycations. He goes to see his children who are out of state. He flies up north. So, um, yeah. Then we couldn't find, we had everybody calling every vet they had in their phone. Like we had friends just scrolling through their phones looking for vets. Correct. Yep. We found one cattle vet that would do it the next morning and he's not good with horses and I really didn't want to use him so another girlfriend of mine found um, Dr. Liz and she uh, is really good um. she told us to flush it and she said bring him in first thing in the morning be sitting here first thing in the morning so she made room for RJ to bring her in first thing in the morning and How'd that go? Pretty good. We got it all stitched up. But She's what did fine. we find out? That she sewn up. Okay, what does that mean? People don't understand what that means. Uh, you explain. He hates talking about female parts. In the racehorse world, and apparently it's carried over into the barrel racing world, we've had Coop for how many years? We've discussed this. Thir uh, seven, right? Yep. About seven years we've had her, and we did not know that someone had sewn her uterus shut. Yes, I said that. They sewed her uterus shut. Now, according to racehorse people, it keeps them from sucking air back there when they run. Now, I don't know if you've ever watched the way air flows off the horse's back. And the way that they run, they sweat between their back legs, and it does not 
they, they don't sweat it off. There's no air moving back there. So whoever dreamed up this lovely little thing has never studied how air moves over a horse. Because if what they're saying is true and that a female sucks air back there into her uterus as she runs, every horse would have a rectal uh, infection because those two holes are pretty much right there. So um, if you know horses at all, if you've ever ridden a horse, you know there's no airflow. It flows off their back and their tail and that's it. It doesn't whip around their legs and up into their uterus. I promise it does not do that. Um, unfortunately, there's people that believe that it does. And there's vets that indulge people. And I've already taken a private message or two telling me that, oh, it has to be for the health of the horse. No, it does not. And we, we are against it. Um, we don't believe that. There is no medical evidence showing that that does any good. There's no studies on that. There is no anything. I'd love to see somebody do a study on how air flows across a horse and prove to me that it sucks up in their uterine. It doesn't happen. Um, I'm sorry. But anyway, we don't believe in it. But here's the thing. Back months ago, correct? Yeah. We talked about breeding her. If we had tried to breed her, not only would we have hurt her seriously, permanent damage, we'd have hurt the stud too. On the upside, it can be undone. And when we get ready to breed her, we're going to do that. Right now, we need to leave it so that um, there's no more trauma to that area um, because she does have stitches on her vulva. So, a little complicated, but not really. We'll fix it in time, and once we get her unstitched, it won't ever be stitched again. That's crazy. And I don't know who thought that up, that stitching a uterus shut. Um, and here's the thing, guys. These stitches are actually done inside her. Yeah, so uh, it's an unnecessary surgery. That's what it is. Anyway, moving on. So she got all sewn up, right? Yep. Um, she was cleared to work. She was cleared to work, correct? Yep. So she went to the rodeo last night. They said that those stitches would not um, do her any harm. and She can't rip them open or anything. So RJ's being very careful, correct? Yep. With, not with my hair. I actually combed my hair before I come on. Doesn't look like it. Okay, mister, I wear a ball cap so I don't have to comb my hair. It's windy here, so he's making fun of me. Anyway, alright, so we got her sewed up Thursday. Yep. Then Friday, what? Thursday we did some of the run. We'll talk about that in the farmhouse. But then Friday, we're just trying to get through in the barn stalls. Seriously. <laughs> Friday the farrier came. What did we find out? Yeah. All right. First off, Precious now has shoes. Back shoes only. Explain why. She's not stopping really good on her. She's she, stopping on her front end. And she's so. training to rope. And we want her to not bounce on her front legs when she stops, but set down on her butt and just kind of slide. Because if she keeps bouncing, she'll blow out her knees. Um, in order to teach her that, what did we do? Put some shoes on and it'll make her slide. They're a little bit wide and it'll make her butt slide into place. Um, she may not need them always. We're using them as a training tool right now. Um, because normally she can do it. If you're doing it slow and you're going through it, she does it just fine. But then when you put it all in fast motion, let's do this, that's when she starts to stop on her front. When she doesn't think about it, she stops on her front. So we'll get her going, right? Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. Coop and... Luckily, Coop had thrown a shoe earlier in the week, and she had her back end already done. Um, what day did you get that done? Tuesday? Monday. Monday. Sunday. Sunday. 
it was sometime this week after podcasting, she'd thrown a shoe, uh, took her up to the farrier, did some roping with him, and then, and they just redid the back shoes because he knew he was coming Friday, and there's no sense in him putting a bad one back on. It's just dangerous. So if they're, he just pre-did her back end, which turned out to be a good thing because then he didn't have to mess with her back end after she got stitches out of there, uh, back there the next day. So, um, it's a good thing, right? Yep. All right. Um, then Storm got shoes. She's had shoes. Ice got a trim. Uh, Star got a trim. Yep. Um, Kavayu did not. He did not need it. Um, he was actually in pretty good shape. Then, who else we got? Durf got a trim. And when the farrier went to trim Durf, what did he find? He cut his leg. He had sliced his leg open. And we had not caught it. Lee had been doing the chores because RJ, for the last couple of days, has been having to go to work in the evening, which he normally goes in the day. And so RJ wasn't doing chores, and Dad does not check. We, I don't know. He, I don't, you're short. Like 50 cents. Um, anyway, well, look in your wallet or in your pocket or in my in purse. My pocket, well, what do I do in my pocket for your money? Look, at, look in my purse. He's counting change for something to do. Um, I, that's my farmer's market box, and I get paid with change a lot. I have almost $5 in dimes. Anyway, um, so he had cut his leg. RJ, shut this, his windows real quick so that we can keep going. Uh, train's coming. Um, he cut it, I guess where you'd say, it, it, on us, it would be right here. And um, and it was a couple days old. Dad doesn't check. He just walks out and he uh, feeds, and then that's it. So um, it probably should have had a couple of stitches. Thankfully for us, we put him on an antibiotic. Doc Stites is still gone. So even if I wanted stitches on him, I couldn't have gotten them. Uh, we uh, you can go ahead and open it up. No, the thing is done. Then. So, we um, doctored it. There is a product called Underwoods, which does not require cleaning, and they actually don't want you to, to clean it when they do it. So, um, we use that product, and we put him on an antibiotic. So, how did dirt look today, or did you do it? Did that I did it. And? Really good. Any infection? We got him out of his muddy pen. There's been storms here, so his pen is muddy. And to avoid getting mud and stuff in that, and to help, we just turn him out on pasture. Um, we bring him up morning and night, doctor it, and then send him back out. Um, will he have to have any more penicillin? No. Okay. So, none in my wallet? Oh, yeah, there's 75 cents a quarter. Mm. Enough to buy me a pop sometimes. Foam cup pop. Oh, that's your pop. He's mean. Anyway, okay, so I, I learned that from you. Um, that is all in the barn stalls. Yes, almost twenty minutes of everything that's happened with these animals this week. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, but on the upside, we did find um Liz, correct? Mm -hmm. And. How did we like Liz? She's mm -hmm. alright. She's a good vet. She's a good vet? Yep. Okay. There you go. Cool. I have $5.99. Uh, nope. You better recount. Because either you get one too many that can go in the box, or you're short more. Um. Anyway, we did find Dr. Liz, and that's a good thing because it's always good to have a backup. And she um, also vaccinated Coop. Coop had to have her tetanus and all that stuff. We just had her Coggins done, like, the day, the week before. So we're okay with all that, huh? Um, Coop is also on an antibiotic, but hers goes in her feet. So that's a good thing, correct? Yep. All right. 
I think we're moving on to mending fences. Um, the only thing that's been going on around here that we I really have been working on is the uh, that one's short, so are all of these. Uh, we made the strawberry bed. No, that was last week. Um, tree limbs have been falling. I've tried to get the guys to cut on this tree some more, but now it's just starting to fall on the house. Um, by the grace of God, nothing has fallen. It, it's hit the edge of the house, but it hasn't um, done any damage to the house, correct? So, that's a good thing. These dimes are different sizes. No, they're not. They are too. No, they're not. Somebody can't count to ten. I can't do. One, two, ten. Okay. Anyway, so mostly that's what we've been dealing with in many fences. Um, the trailer, you did get the rims um, fixed up and got the stock trailer. Now has all 15 inch tires on it. Until last night when you had a blowout because we left the 16 inches a spare. So yeah. All right. In the yarn farm, anything sheep and goats. I'm keep saying I'm going to make time to start washing wool again and I haven't gotten it done. I just haven't. Uh, crazy, crazy stuff, correct? Mm -hmm. I wonder why. 20 minutes have been the barn stalls and yeah, I haven't had time to wash wool. Um, in the fields, uh, what did you harvest the other day? Strawberries. We've got our first few strawberries and there's a couple out there this morning. I'm going to go out and see if they're ready. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is just like one or two are getting ready and the minute I see that there's a couple ready he runs out and gets them and he eats them and feeds the tops to the pig. Nobody else has gotten anything else from the, shop, from the um, garden. Um, the other thing is that um, everything's blooming. Like my cucumbers now have blooms on them. Um, things are starting to climb. All the vines have just like taken off in the last week and just really started going. Um, what do I do now? A lady, let me fold this over like this. If you count it right, that's too full, I'll bet you. There's not. You double count it. I triple count it. Alright, put it in the box. Um, so, I had a lady give me some bell pepper plant. And I had a gentleman give me um, two, yes, two um, honeydew melon plants. And so the honeydew melon is doing good, but the pepper plants, I don't know. They were big, and I put them in the garden, and I guess they don't like me because now they're wilting. Um, and they've been watered. They've been done. I. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. And they were nice big tall ones too. So we'll see what the peppers do. Um, anything else in there? I moved the lemon balm. Oh, my bench. My bench. What did you help me do this week? We did make a swing. I redid the bench that my father-in-law built many minutes ago because I can't remember how many years now. <laughs> how many nickels did it take to make two dollars? Uh, you only have like 10. No, it's like 20 for a dollar. For a dollar. So it would be like 40. You don't have that many. Yeah, I don't. Um, anyway, I don't remember when he built it. He built it back when RJ was in elementary school, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so my daughter had this thing. It's a uh, apron is what it is but it's for pulling motors and I took it and made it into a swing frame and then I made this bench I redid the wood on it and I made it hanging with some chain and so now I have a swing in my potluck garden correct so um yeah we're super super excited about that okay I'm super excited about that and I pretty much told the guys I'm making my she shack, aren't I? Yep. 
I went down there and we burnt that pile of brush and I've laid it out pretty much and I'm just going to start buying the stuff at, to make it. So um, I'm going to build it and go from there. I was even studying how to make my own rafters so I can have a pointy roof and not a slant. I know how to do slanted roofs, but I've got the only thing I have left to do to really figure it out is I've got to figure out how much pitch I'm supposed to have. There's an actual formula. If your walls are so foot, many feet apart, your pitch is supposed to be this far apart. You ought to apart. just make one of those houses where you don't have any walls and you just have a roof from the floor to the top. An A-frame? I don't know how to do one of those. Be a challenge. Freaking awesome, dude. I've never even thought about framing one. Alright, now what's next? <laughs> now he's got me thinking. An, a little A-frame with an earthen floor would be cute. I could plant moss up over the roof. You'd sleep up in the little nose a little bit. I mean. No, you would. Anyway. Okay, so. In the farmhouse. What else we get done? Thursday was our big running day for in the farmhouse. And that was... We went, got tires on the truck, right? Mm -hmm. Just we to drive a tire for a week for nothing. Yes. Here is our tip of the day. When you go into a tire shop and you tell them that you need a tire, make sure they put the actual tire that you pay for or that you tell them to put on it is what they put on it. RJ, tell them what happened. Put, okay. put, that's a mouse thing. Put, okay. You're going to run the electronic. What happened? They put the wrong size tire on the truck. Okay. Last week, we was in there to get one that I blew. Yes. And we came back to get the other three. And they realized they put the wrong size tire. No, they didn't. They called us back and told them they couldn't put the size tire that I told them to put on it. Because I had put the wrong size tire on it uh, four days ago. And I looked at them and I said, no, I did not. My truck takes 235.70 R16s. That's what the book says. That's what's always been on it. That is all I've ever put on it. Um, I said, that's even the size of my spare. And the gentleman goes, well, that's not what's on there. And I said, well, then you need to back the card up because I did not. I said, I have my receipt in the truck and I made him go get it. And I said, what does everything say? I said, I was right here. And the guy looks at me and says, yeah, I remember this keychain. I said, I was here. I told you the proper tire. You put the wrong tire on it. Well, no. So they look it up to see what was put in as I had told them and what was handwritten down. And guess what? I told them the right tire. They physically put the wrong tire on so that tire that we had been driving around with for a week um, was like what they say it was a 235 255 70. yeah 255 70 16 and I'm like no because they said they only had two of that same size so they couldn't do all four and I was like no you're gonna do the right one you're gonna do it. and finally the manager come over there and they're like, well, we, I don't know. I looked at the manager and I said, your mistake, you are going to fix this. He looked at me. He looked at the people. He says, I just want to know who put on the original tire. And he looked at the guys and he goes, tell me that. So they told him who it was. I don't know the guy's name. And he said, go out there and fix it. Four tires, the right size, fix it. And then he, uh proceeded to tell us that unfortunately he was going to have to eat the cost of that tire because where we go does not sell used tires so they prorated it and sent it back to the manufacturer it's not defective or anything so he's hoping to get a little bit of a credit but he had to eat quite a bit because it's not the manufacturer's fault so anyway tip of the day check to make sure actually physically read that size because just because you're telling them doesn't matter. Or go to a confident tire shop. No, just all tire. Anybody can make a mistake. Anybody can grab the wrong tire. You know, so just check before you drive off. Um, 
they could have looked at me and said, well, how do I know you didn't change the tire? Because that was the only brand new one I had. Uh, anyway, so what else has been going on in the farm? Dad went to the doctor. So yep. now we're just waiting for his medicine to kick back in, right? Yep. Um, that's been interesting, huh? Yeah. We had tat visitors, or is that? That's right, we did. We had tat visitors. Um, one from Florida and one from California. They met on the trail, so they camped out down at the pond. Had a nice little camp out. And then we're up and on their way about, what, seven? RJ gathered cattle around them. But. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm yawning a lot, huh? All right, anything else? No. Yes, our little intern. She was here yesterday. What did she get done? I don't know, trim trip, fruit heads, clean up the sticks where the tree is falling. Cleaned up the barn. Her and I just went around. We, we washed all the waters and um, did that. Tried to figure out where these horses are getting cut in the stalls because these are technically, these are plastic stalls, guys. These are not full of metal. I mean, they're built. The walls are with corrugated plastic three-chamber for holding fiber optics. It's plastic. Um, anyway, her and I did that. We gathered eggs. We made lotion bars. We... Cleaned the barn. What else? Anything else? Mm -hmm. We took our break in the garden. It was a heat advisory, so um, her and I drank like six bottles of water between the two of us <laughs> in like two hours. So, um, been having some storms, correct? Yep. Um, which is good because then I don't have to um, water the garden, right? Okay, anything else? No. There's only one thing that I've been working on in, on the porch. What have you been working on? Anything? Nope. There's a young lady who went to school with RJ. She's in college now. And she likes to run around barefoot. She's been helping at the farmer's market. So I am making her, uh, what do you call them, barefoot sandals. And I'm going to show you on my arm. I have one done. They're really cute. It hooks around your little finger there. And then this goes up your leg. And it looks really cute when it's on. I probably should have done it on my middle finger, but I don't think it'll fit over my middle finger. I don't have, you have a fat finger. I do, but it's for a toe, so let's see here. But anyway, when you put them on, they really look cute. And I tried to put, there it goes. I tried to put a bead down here that had a little peace sign that brings this blue and this green together. And it doesn't work. The hole is in the wrong uh, direction, so it flips sideways. And I didn't like it, so I just didn't put it. So it's got some little beads. Um, you could also put a little trinket on that and make that a choker, couldn't you? No. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? I'm hilarious, aren't I? Oh, yeah. So anyway, it's really cute. I still have one more to make, and then she will get those at the farmer's market. And like I said, they're just barefoot sandals because she's always running around barefoot. I'm going to make me some, I think, too. Right? Yep. Um, For OHCE, I had my OHCE meeting, um, and I donated books to the little library there that are about um, sheep, goats, pigs, whatever. Um, what else did I get done? Oh! I'm going to be on a farmer's market committee. I have my first meeting, like, the 27th or something at 10 o'clock in town. So, um, it's a Tuesday. So that means I need my truck, dude. Yeah. It's going to have to go to work early and be back by 10 or late and get back late. Right? Mm -hmm. He's not even paying attention. He's not even here. He's tired and just playing with stuff in the drawer. Um, I did stuff in this serious. All right. Other than that, do we have anything else? No, nope, we're done. Oh, yeah. See you guys. Bye bye. <laughs> that was kind of rude. We ain't got nothing else to talk about, so. And no you've use. got a rodeo to get to, huh? There's no use in uh, making people sit here and watch us. They're probably already going, are these long winded people done yet?
Well, they've already turned us off. I was going to say, honey, it's your two. They'll just click the, the turn off button. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if you guys hung around for the end, good job. <laughs> you should get an award. We'll ship them a cookie. We have to make a badge. We'll have to make a badge. Of I listen. Oh, you know, some of those people have, like, I don't know, just different um, no. followers that are always there. And they say they're the such and such um, followers or whatever. They, they have a specific name for them. And so anytime they put anything in the comments, they'll put that little tag on the side. We need to get one of those. Okay, so what are they going to be called? I don't know, but we'll figure Judy's. it out. Right? Yeah. All right. So if you're a member of the Cutie Patrol, Cutie Squad, Cutie Troop, Cutie what? We'll work on it and get back to you. We'll work on it and get back to you. And if you have any ideas, you can put them in the comments below. If you made it this long. If you made it this long, you deserve it. So we will see you next week. Y'all have a great one. Bye.